Flight 8 was a major test for SpaceX's Starship program, but it encountered serious problems, engine failures being the most critical. Starship needs all its engines to work correctly throughout its journey, but during this flight, multiple engines failed, causing the spacecraft to lose control and ultimately end in destruction. To fully understand what went wrong, it's important to look at past flight tests. In Flight 7, a pressure buildup in the ship's attic compartment led to fuel leaks and engine malfunctions. SpaceX made design changes after that flight, but Flight 8 still suffered from engine failures, showing that more improvements were necessary. During Flight 8, SpaceX's livestream captured small fires near the Raptor vacuum engine. These fires seem to originate from the regenerative cooling pipes, which keep the engine at the right temperature. If these pipes are damaged, the engine can overheat and gradually lose efficiency. At first, the problem didn't seem too serious, but as the flight continued, things quickly got worse. One engine failed, leading to shutdowns in others. Eventually, Starship was left with only two working vacuum engines, which was not enough to keep it stable. The spacecraft lost control and was destroyed. Experts now believe the real issue isn't the Raptor engines themselves, but the fuel feed lines that supply them with liquid methane and liquid oxygen. These lines transport propellant from Starship's tanks to the engines, and if they have defects, such as leaks, blockages, or structural weaknesses, they can disrupt fuel flow, causing engine failures. One key discovery is that the problem seems to get worse when there is less liquid oxygen in the tanks. This could explain why the issue wasn't detected during ground tests, where tanks are full. It only became apparent during flight as oxygen levels dropped. Additionally, the latest version of Starship was modified to accommodate three vacuum engines instead of two. This required extra transfer tubes and aft dome modifications. While these changes were made to improve performance, they may have also introduced new vulnerabilities, making the system more prone to fires. SpaceX has been improving Starship through multiple test flights, and engine problems have been a recurring issue. In Flight 1, the first integrated test of Starship and Super Heavy, several engines failed during ascent, and the vehicle lost control before being destroyed by the flight termination system. The cause was methane leaks and engine malfunctions that disrupted Starship's trajectory. After this test, SpaceX made several upgrades to the engines and launch pad systems. Flight 2 also suffered from multiple engine shutdowns, particularly in the Super Heavy booster. Starship failed to complete its planned orbital insertion due to issues with the hot staging system, which was being tested for the first time. The booster did not separate cleanly, affecting Starship's ascent and leading to a loss of control. Despite this setback, the data from Flight 2 helped SpaceX refine hot staging, which is critical for efficient orbital flight. Flight 3 was the first test where Starship reached near-orbital velocity, marking significant progress. However, engine failures still played a role in limiting its success. Multiple Raptors shut down during ascent, and although the vehicle achieved re-entry, the heat shield suffered extensive damage, causing the ship to be lost before splashdown. This demonstrated that engine reliability and structural resilience were still key challenges. Flight 4 aimed to fix issues from previous tests, but engine shutdowns and fuel system problems were still evident. Starship managed to conduct a full-duration burn, but during the deorbit phase, multiple vacuum engine failures led to an unstable descent. At this point, SpaceX began to focus heavily on the feed line system, recognizing it as a major weak point. The Raptor engines are some of the most advanced rocket engines ever built but they rely on a stable fuel supply to function properly. The feed lines must withstand extreme pressures and temperatures while ensuring a constant flow of liquid methane and oxygen. If these lines develop cracks, leaks, or pressure fluctuations, engine performance is directly affected. In Flight 8, the increasing severity of the issue as oxygen levels dropped suggests that the feed line system isn't optimized for low fuel conditions. Another challenge SpaceX faces is making Starship as lightweight as possible while keeping its structure strong. The company has been designing thinner, more efficient feed lines to maximize fuel capacity. But if they are too fragile, they can become prone to failure. 
To fix these problems, SpaceX is now running additional fuel system tests at different propellant levels to see how the feed lines behave under low fuel conditions. These tests will help engineers find weak spots and reinforce them before Flight 9. SpaceX is already working on solutions to these challenges. The company has started hiring more engineers to focus specifically on Raptor engine feed lines. Their job will be to redesign and strengthen the system that delivers fuel to the engines, ensuring that it functions reliably in all phases of flight. In addition to improving the feed lines, SpaceX is making changes to Starship's aft dome and transfer tubes. These modifications aim to prevent leaks and reduce the risk of fire spread in case of an anomaly. Flight 9 will incorporate all the latest fixes and improvements from previous flights, including upgraded fuel feed lines to prevent leaks and pressure losses, a stronger aft dome, and transfer tubes to reduce fire risk, reinforced vacuum engine cooling pipes to prevent overheating, and more extensive low fuel testing before launch. If SpaceX succeeds, it will be a major step toward making Starship a fully reusable launch system capable of handling future deep space missions. Meanwhile, two NASA astronauts are stuck on the International Space Station due to problems with Boeing's Starliner spacecraft. The mission, which launched on June 5, 2024, was supposed to last only eight days, but technical issues have delayed their return for over a month. NASA and Boeing are still trying to determine if Starliner can safely bring them back, and there are discussions about using a SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft as a backup plan. The problem started after Starliner docked at the International Space Station. Engineers found helium leaks and thruster malfunctions, raising concerns about whether the spacecraft could safely undock and complete its return to Earth. Boeing has conducted multiple tests, including firing the thrusters in space, but there is still uncertainty about their reliability during re-entry. NASA has emphasized that the astronauts, Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, are safe and are continuing their work on the International Space Station. However, with Starliner still being evaluated, NASA is considering alternatives in case the spacecraft cannot return on its own. One option is to bring them back on SpaceX's Crew Dragon, which has successfully transported astronauts to and from the International Space Station multiple times. A possible rescue could happen during SpaceX's Crew-9 mission, scheduled to launch in mid-August. NASA is reviewing whether extra seats could be added to Crew Dragon or if a separate mission would be needed. However, they are still hoping Starliner can be fixed and complete its mission as planned. Starliner program has been a complete failure, and after the latest mission problems, the company seems to finally understand that it's time to move on. Reports suggest that Boeing is looking to exit the Starliner program after losing billions of dollars trying to compete with SpaceX. The Starliner program has struggled from the start. Initially, Boeing signed a $4.2 billion contract with NASA in 2014 to develop the spacecraft as part of the Commercial Crew program. In comparison, SpaceX received $2.6 billion for Crew Dragon yet SpaceX successfully launched astronauts years ahead of Boeing. Repeated failures have forced Boeing to invest even more of its own money to fix Starliner, and according to recent reports, the company has now lost over $1.5 billion on the project. This latest mission was supposed to be a turning point, a chance for Boeing to prove Starliner was reliable. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.